Hi, you've clicked on today's Tropical Tidbit for Friday, May 8, 2015. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here's our first storm of the 2015 Atlantic hurricane season, subtropical storm Ana, uh, spinning away here, sustained winds of 45 miles per hour. And the NHC started initiating advisories last night, and uh, this is now attempting to make a transition from subtropical to a fully tropical warm core uh, storm. And right now, convection still limited to less than half of a semicircle on the south and east side. Uh, but the circulation uh, you can observe compared to yesterday has become much more compact. It's still not uh, fully tightened here right at the center. You've got a couple of lobes going on. Um, but you can see the air kind of getting sucked into this new burst of convection on the southeast side. And recon observations, they took two passes through the center. The first one was over here away from the convection. And you can see as this flared up over here on the satellite, the second pass was pulled in closer to the convection where the uh, pressure minimum was and it fell by four millibars to a thousand and one so there is a little bit of deepening going on as this convective burst fires but the key for ana will be sustaining convection like this and starting to increase thunderstorm coverage to cover the center of circulation um, all 360 degrees around the storm and uh, right now uh, it's over the Gulf Stream. This warm tongue of water off the coast is definitely helping to feed this. Uh, these storms usually have a hard time generating a lot of thunderstorms during their transition between subtropical and tropical. Usually thunderstorms are not supported as well during that awkward in-between phase, sort of like adolescence. But uh, it will probably start generating more thunderstorms with time, as this has about 60 hours uh, before it's going to be making landfall, according to the NHC forecast. Now, uh, the other problem for this, though, is that even though it has warm water uh, currently, there's a lot of dry air that we noted yesterday coming off and wrapping around toward the east side of the system. It's now finally made its way um, to the east side, and it's starting to wrap in right here in the northeast quadrant. And we can see that illuminated better in the water vapor loop. You can see this dry air that we had noted. It was over uh, the Carolinas a couple of days ago. It now rotated around through Florida. Now this area is moist, and the dry air has come all the way around into the east and northeast sides of the storm. And you can see this, this area of orange, this tongue of dry air, starting to work its way into the core of Ana, and it remains to be seen how detrimental this will be to the storm. Uh, the structure of the storm is fairly similar to Beryl in late May of 2012, another subtropical storm that transitioned to tropical. That one made landfall near Jacksonville, moving west-southwest, but uh, Beryl had less dry air to deal with than Ana does, and for reference, Beryl made it up to a 70 mile per hour tropical storm. So inferring from that, you know, there's potential even in May for storms like this to strengthen and sometimes a little bit more than expected in sudden bursts when they're this small because over warm water, all it takes is a nice big thunderstorm burst and you can get very quick intensification. Um, but it remains to be seen whether this will strengthen very much. The NHC has this moving very slowly toward the coast under this blocking pattern that we've talked about previously. Um, until Sunday, uh, midday Sunday or so, it moves in southwest of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And that's enough time uh, for it to do a little something while it's over the warm water here. Uh, but uh, by the time it passes about this point off the coast, the shelf waters are much colder and would likely limit intensification or cause weakening of the storm prior to landfall. So that is the good news is that even if this strengthens out here, there is a barrier of cold water that is going to be moving over slowly before reaching the coastline. And because it's moving slowly, that will allow time for the cold water to cause weakening of the, st of the system before actual landfall. Now, of course, rainfall will still be a threat with a slow-moving storm. We can see that it has shrunk in size, meaning that the rain, the band of rain that was over South Carolina yesterday, all of that's gone. There is no rain over land right now. But if this convection starts to wrap around as this moves slowly toward the coast, there could be a period of a couple of days straight where there is heavy rains over uh, the South and North Carolina coastline. So that will be probably the primary concern with the system, as it is not forecasted by NHC to intensify greater than 50 miles per hour in terms of winds before landfall but of course tropical storm force winds can still cause problems so always be prepared and as i mentioned uh, even in may 
You have small compact tropical systems. Once this becomes fully tropical, spinning over the Gulf Stream can always intensify more than expected. So that will be worth keeping an eye on. Even if it weakens before landfall, the stronger it gets out here, the stronger it will be even after moving over the shelf water before moving inland. So wind impacts could still be something to uh, think about with the system. But rain right now is the primary concern. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.